first question is an IP datagram of size 1000 bytes arrives at a router. The router has to forward this packet on a link whose maximum transmission unit that is MTU is 100 bytes. Assume that the size of the IP header is 20 bytes. The number of fragments that the IP datagram will be divided into for transmission is. So basically total amount of data that you have to transmit is 1000 bytes. That is the amount of data that arrives at a router. So da total data to send across the network is 1000 bytes. Okay. But maximum transmission unit that means the maximum amount of data that can be sent at a time across the network is equal to 100 bytes. Now this 100 bytes or each fragment that is sent must have a header and a data field header is given to be 20 bytes and the data field can be occupied by the remaining bytes. So basically in each transmission unit or in each MTU we would have a 20 bytes header and the remaining can be filled with data that is each can have a maximum of 80 bytes of data. So if one MTU carries 80 bytes of data how many MTUs would be carrying total of 1000 bytes of data? How many MTUs would be required to carry 1000 bytes of data that we have to find out. So we can write it as 80 into x, x is the total number of MTU, okay, is equal to 1000 and x would come out to be 1000 divided by 80 and this would come out to be 12.5. But since you know that 1000 is not an exact multiple of 80. So basically 12 MTUs would be transmitting 80 bytes each and like this a total of 960 bytes would be transmitted. Okay and how did I get that? 12 into 80 bytes would be transmitted when 12 MTUs would be sent across the network each of these MTUs would have 80 bytes and 20 bytes header, 80 bytes of data each. And one extra byte would be, one extra MTU would be carrying the remaining 40 bytes, which is 1000 minus 960. So 40 bytes of remaining data. All right. So what we had to answer the number of fragments that the IPO datagram will be divided into. So 12 plus 1 that will give me a total of 13 fragments. This is the answer. Alright, so it was an easy question. You just need to remember that across a network at a time we can only send an a fragment that has the size of MTU. That means if the MTU is 100 bytes, we can at most send 100 bytes in a time across the network. And in those 100 bytes, we would have to send the header as well as the data. So keeping apart the header bytes, the remaining bytes would be occupied by data. And now we have to count how many such MTUs would be sent across the network to send the total data. So this was an easy one. The answer is 13 here. Now coming to the second question, the question asks you which of the following is or are the examples of stateful application layer protocol. Now here you need to know the concept of stateful application layer protocol. Okay, let's first understand what is a stateless and stateful protocol. Now a stateless protocol, a stateless, please be careful about the two terms. A stateless protocol does not maintain the state of the connection that is being maintained. So it does, it treats each request coming to the server as an independent request okay it is not related to the previous request so i can write down here a stateless protocol this is for your information to remember it treats each in 
incoming request independently all right and it this request is not related to the previous request so even if the same client is sending this request again and again the stateless protocol would never consider it coming from the same client okay it would maintain each request state separately and what are the examples of stateless protocol uh, ip is a stateless protocol now http is a stateless protocol now opposite or contradictory to stateless is stateful protocol what is a stateful protocol it maintains the state of the connection or the information about the connection that is maintained and the exchange of request and responses that happen so we can say it keeps the connection connection information about the request response exchanges okay and what are the examples of stateful protocol the examples are ftp pop3 and tcp now please be careful here that here i am only mentioning stateful and stateless i am not mentioning application layer protocol but in the question you are being asked two things stateful as well as an application layer protocol so even if i have stated that tcp is a stateful protocol that maintains the connection information it is not an application protocol okay it's a transport layer protocol so tcp which is given to you in the option would not be considered because it's not an application protocol now apart from tcp i told you http is a stateless protocol so http is also not considered ftp that is file transfer protocol and pop3 are stateless protocols as well as they are application layer protocol so the correct answer is b and d oh so this should be b and d here not b and c okay so the correct answer is b and d ftp and pop3 are the correct protocols that are application layer as well as they are stateful protocol based on hamming distance and hamming codes so uh, for hamming distance you should remember two major formulas which is for error correcting codes and error detecting codes in this question as it states that consider a binary code that consists of only four valid code words as given below let the hamming distance the minimum hamming distance of the code be p and the maximum number of erroneous bits that can be corrected by the code is q and we have to find the values of p and q so one thing you need to understand is if you are given different valid code words then the minimum hamming distance between these code words is the minimum number of bits that differ between any two code words all right so uh, let me state it very clearly for you if these are different code words 1101101 and 11110 if you perform the zor of any two keywords and you find the number of ones to be the minimum in a particular case then that minimum value would be the hamming distance suppose if we perform the zor of these two values so the the zor would come out to be the number of ones that would be present in the zor would be 3 for the bits at the zeroth the first and the third positions also if we perform the zor suppose in this case of first and last values the first and last keywords the zor would come out to be four ones all right so this would be one this is the result of zor so there in this case there are four ones that are present but in other cases if you find out other zor like in the case of 01011 you'll find that there are three bits that are ones all right so in this case 
the minimum hamming distance that would be present will be equal to 3 because 3 is the value that is the least difference that is present in any two keywords. Alright, so min since the hamming distance, minimum hamming distance is represented by P and P we have found out to be 3. So this value gets fixed. Now you know for correction of D number of errors, you need 2d plus 1 distance. Alright, that means 2d plus 1 equal to 3. For correction of 3, uh, for uh, correcting errors that with hamming distance having, ha with hamming distance equal to 3, the formula would be 2d plus 1 where you can correct d number of errors. So here d would come out to be 3 minus 1 divided by 2 and D comes out to be 1. Therefore, the correct value of D or here the D is the value, Q is the equivalent of D in this question because it is representing the maximum number of erroneous bits that can be corrected. So, for correction of D errors, we have the formula 2D plus 1 equal to 3. 3 because 3 is the hamming distance here and when we find out uh, D the value comes out to be 1 which is equal to Q in this case. So the correct answer is P equal to 3 Q equal to 1 which is case A. So this was a very easy question in networks. You have to be acquainted with what is hamming distance. What given certain keywords how you will find the hamming distance. Hamming distance is the minimum value or the minimum uh, number of ones by which any two keywords are separated. When I say minimum number of ones, that means for the valid keywords, if I pick any two keywords and find out for all such pairs, I find out the ZOR of the pairs and the minimum number of ones that would be present in any pair would give me the minimum Hamming distance. Also, to correct N errors or to correct D errors, the formula that I would use is 2D plus 1. That means 2D plus 1 errors would be 2D plus 1 would be equal to the minimum hamming distance, which is equal to 3. So that is how you'll solve this question. Thank you for watching the video. Please like and share the video if you understood the question and subscribe to the channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more lectures and questions on previous gate and UGC net papers. Thank you.